Hello everyone. Nice to see you. It's been a long time since I've made a few videos, but I wanted to get back into it. And what better way, time than the holidays. The holidays bring out a lot of stress for people who are gluten-free, dairy-free, who have allergies, celiac disease. And today I'm going to have you meet me here in the kitchen and we're going to prepare a stuffed, uh, oyster stuffed, a smoked oysters, uh, stuffed Cornish game hen. I think it's the perfect size for someone who is a celiac and has to make something for themselves to take to someone else's dinner or it's the perfect side smaller dish for a chef to make um, to serve just to someone who is celiac or gluten-free dairy-free all of my dishes i try to make with the best possible ingredients fresh organic uh, non-GMO because grains of all sorts and I'm one that corn affects um, because it's um, when the, they do the GMO um, splicing they splice in an antibiotic and the pesticides with that molecule and I react to those things anybody with gut issues will react to those things eventually some people seem to tolerate it better in their gut, but then it affects their heart or kidneys. And flour and corn are well known for kidney damage. So with all that being said, let's get started. The first thing I like to do is have a glass of wine with my food preparation. And it's usually only holiday time. It's not a time when um, or for me anyway I don't do it every day certainly um, maybe a couple times a year and if I had my Jacques Pepin you know many of you know that my birthday was the same day as Julia Child's and growing up I suffered a lot with food issues and so Julia Child's and Jacques Pepin were my heroes in the kitchen my early motivators uh, they gave me inspiration ideas I just had to make it my way I'm not a professionally trained chef you're gonna find a lot of things wrong with the way I handle food with the way I do it but please understand this is a dedicated gluten-free corn-free um, dairy-free kitchen and I'm the only one that's been in it since it was sterilized. And so I feel a little bit more freedom. I'm not preparing food right now for the public, although I have my home license now as a dedicated gluten-free, dairy-free bed and breakfast. Uh, we call it Asclepius House and Oracle so that I can just kind of channel in some healing messages from uh, the higher self and ascended masters and help people along their healing journey. It's been a um, very big honor uh, to me and many people that have come into my life feel like they are very privileged or very lucky to have met me to have the insight, the knowledge, the inspiration, the ideas, the menus, the helpful hints all the above uh, on their journey. So this meal is primarily for celiac, gluten-free people. And I um, eliminate almost all grains except uh, brown rice and uh, we'll go from there. So first thing we have to do is take a sip of wine and put our hair up and get going. And I want to dedicate this video to a dear friend, or at least an internet crush, I guess you could say, who has inspired me. I've been through a very long, long, hard year. I had heart surgery this year, and I moved from the far west coast, actually on the Pacific Ocean, to the middle of the United States, back to um, where I was born. 
well, not the town I was born in, but to the area. Anyway, uh, we're going to get started. And as you know, my hair, as you see, my hair has grown somewhat this year because all I do is put it up and keep going. So you get to watch me uh, do the real meal deal in the kitchen today. And I'm not going to put on my apron because I've prepped everything took it off, had to answer the door, and then came back, and now we're going to video. So the very first thing we're going to do is in my little bowl here, I have two cracked eggs and a big tablespoon of minced garlic, okay? To that, I'm going to add my onion. So a little over half a cup of chopped up onion that I've already done, and I'm just going to move that into there. Now, um, when, and that is um, kind of your choice of onion. Um, for me, those were from Idaho. I picked them up on my trip down here and um, stored them in a cool place so that I'd have a little taste and the flavors of the places that I traveled through on my move. Now, the next thing I'm going to add to this is not that hard to find, but it's just the um, smoked oysters, one can. You could do your own at home if you're close to the ocean, and these are called Crown Prince. Um, they are from managed fisheries, so if that's an issue for you, then find... Um, some smoked fish it could even be salmon this would be excellent dish with salmon as well so i'm going to give these eggs a little beating and mix in the garlic and the onion and then i'm going to put the whole can of oysters in here and i'm going to pretend that my friend Chef Henry Anderson, the Highland Chef, he's on Facebook, you can find him, is here in the kitchen with me, helping me drink my wine and asking me questions and telling me his beautiful stories and um, inspiring me to get through the holidays. I had the hardest time. I did put up my tree a few days ago, and uh, as I... Uh, stood the tree up. It's a brand new tree, brand new ornaments. I'm leaving the past behind. I um, burst out in tears and just started crying and crying and crying because I have no family this year. My sister lives a few blocks away and I'm trying to talk her and her husband into coming for at least Thanksgiving. Who knows what's going to happen for Christmas. But what I'm doing right now in the bowl is I'm smishing them. So you could do this earlier, but I kind of like smishing them in the bowl because then all of the flavor and all of the oil gets into this recipe. And then we're just gonna mix them up. Okay, so I'm all about flavor because when I had to give up the gluten, the dairy, the corn, you know, French pastry for God's sake, um, I had, I felt to sacrifice flavor to survive. And all of my dishes, all of my menus, and um, the people that come and stay with me in my seven day boot camps and go through the detox process and the um, learning how to cook, how to can, how to prepare their own food. We do hypnosis work, we do inner activations, upgrade DNA, we do a lot of shadow alchemy, we do a lot of uh, psychology work in dealing with how to stop the sabotage that we do to ourselves. It's really, really important when you have a life or health threatening illness to not sabotage yourself with your diet. It's a little bit, some people uh, work really hard at not sabotaging themselves when they lose weight. 
And hypnosis works really well for them because we get to the core issues of their inner saboteur. Um, but when you have a life-threatening illness like celiac or um, a gluten allergy or dairy allergy, and I've been in anaphylactic shock, those are life-threatening, taking, risking situations. So my kitchen must be pure. I must stay pure and in full integrity with my diet, probably more than any person I've ever known. That's where my integrity shows up. So what we have is just the mixture. I call it the wet mix. So it's the onions, the garlic, the smoked oysters, and the eggs. And it's all mixed up. Now, I've already prepared um, the toast. And because a lot, I love going to Trader Joe's. But a lot of their bread that they use has corn starch in it or corn um, syrup sometimes if it's a flavored. So I make my own. I buy my own <clears throat> white bread. No corn starch, no corn derivative, no dextrose. Um, and I do my own. So I put it in my new fancy toaster that's only had my energy on it that uh, is never gonna see white bread ever. Because <laughs> that took me to the hospital. I had somebody come and visit me and they put their bagels in my toaster and I got so sick the next time I used it, I thought I would die. And it, it literally felt, my stomach swells up, my throat shuts down and you know the world starts spinning. So it's not a situation I, want to be in. Now, with this bread, I have the white bread. I've toasted it to, on this uh, machine, about a four or five. So I like it nice and brown, um, you know, um, and I'm just gonna add that into here. But I have a little trick for flavor. I toast two pieces, extra brown, almost black. Not quite, but it's there. And I add that to the mixture because the brownness, the toastedness adds so much more flavor to the croutons that you're adding and to your dressing. And when you don't have a source of flavor very much in your diet, gluten-free, dairy-free, uh, sugar-free, corn-free, you take out a lot of flavor out. And so for me, I, I find uh, shortcuts or tips or ways to add flavor. And um, burnt toast, <laughs> I don't think anybody would really eat toast this dark, um, is one of those ways that I can add flavor to the dressing. Or some people call it stuffing. I'm actually going to stuff this Cornish hen. And... Um, I'm going to have the leftovers around the hen, and that's going to be um, baked at the same time in the same dish. Now remember, I taught disinfection and sanitation for years. Um, in the college and so I'm really big on not contaminating food no cross contamination no um, extra crumbs left over you know keep your dishes separately when a lot of people become celiac or get diagnosed that or even have a real strong gluten intolerance even if they're not diagnosed yet they frequently will go buy new pots and pans and cookware and things that they can cook in. And I think that's a wonderful, wonderful um, way of keeping yourself safe and healthy and alive, especially if you unfortunately have to live in a home that can't be like mine, dedicated gluten-free. 
I'm very blessed. I'm, um, I actually feel safe in my own home now for the first time. I lived in a home in a condo on the ocean that I moved into um, and did not sterilize and I ran into a few issues. So this one, before anything came in, got sterilized, got cleaned up, pots, pans, ovens. I got a new refrigerator, cleaned it. I don't use the dishwasher except for storage, but it has been cleaned. All the sinks, all the cabinets, everything has gone through it. So what I'm basically doing at this point is just mixing, mixing, mixing. And we're going to have it kind of come out like this to where it's still, the, the bread is still pretty dry in there. So I'm going to add a little um, chicken stock. And I don't add very much chicken stock. I don't know how much that would be. I always buy organic, and this one happens to also be gluten-free and fat-free. Uh, and it has a pretty low sodium count. So that's my direction to save my gut and to still feel like I'm getting the nurturing, the nourishment that my body needs. Remember when you have a gut issue, whether your, your gut bloats when you drink beer or when you have biscuits or pancakes or bread or, you know, in my case, it was French pastry, you have a gut issue. It's a leaky gut or it's a damaged gut. Maybe it's diverticuli. Maybe it's celiac because it breaks down the gut interstitial fluid and um, what's going through the gut that is passed through. I was very blessed to understand the gut very quickly because of my years of work with Dr. Bernard Jensen, which is why when clients come to me, we do all the detox work with colonics and I help them learn how to do it themselves and take that home so that they can survive. I've had many, many doctors tell me that if I hadn't done the detox work, the colonics and eaten organic, I would have been dead. I would have been dead. But it was immediately I could alchemize. I didn't cling to an old diet. I shifted immediately. I felt kind of miserable and headachy for about a week. But after that, I've been celebrating. I have no pain in my body. My joints are fine. I mean, and they're fast. I can lift. I can walk good. I do yoga. You know, life is good to me on the pain management level. There's a lot of um, doctors that talk about if you're not having grain, you will have less pain. Uh, Dr. Osborne recently came out with no pain, no grain, or no grain, no pain. And so if you have pain in any area of your body, arthritis, osteo, joint, achy stuff, I would say start with getting rid of the grains start switching to more of a paleo diet just your your meats and your uh, vegetables and just go simple until you can stabilize and that that's how i started and um we'll go from there all right now i'm going to set this aside this looks really good actually i'm ready to eat it now but those eggs need cooked so <laughs> um next step is getting the baby stuffed oh and this is the bread that i used it's just the white bread from trader joe's it does not have corn starch in it it has potato starch and tapioca starch it does not have um any dairy in it so it's the one that my gut has uh, managed to maintain. Now over here on the stove, I've already uh, oiled my pan that I'm going to use. My oven is preheated to 350. 350 seems to work and it's going to take this bird about two hours to cook and then I'll have a lovely afternoon feast. <laughs> 
all by myself. Now, a lot of people, they have special little grabbers and whatever, you know, to um, get this bird stuffed. This is where I could use a chef in the kitchen and help me, you know, where are you, Jacques Pepin, when I need you. But I'm going to take a nice handful of my stuffing and I'm going to open the cavity up and push it through. Sometimes a little bit of it falls on the floor and that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm a good cleaner. I'm good to have in the kitchen because I know how to clean really well. Anyway, we're going to just stuff this down and I, I do stuff it pretty full. Sometimes I like to put a little apple in this, but today I'm not. Um, I'm saving my apples for an, a homemade apple gluten-free pie for Thanksgiving Day. So um, there is that. All right, now I have pretty much got him full. As you can see, he's, he's stuffed to the brim. And there's a few little flaps here I can kind of pull over and just allow that extra fat to seep in as it's cooking. For Christmas, I'm going to do a duck, so stay tuned for the duck episode. All right, now, this bird was washed after I got it because being gluten-free, dairy-free, corn-free, all of those extra steps and as I said to you already I don't want to deal with cross-contamination I can't control how it was prepared or harvested butchered and so my extra step is clean 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 wash 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 and I think that chefs need to be aware of that factor and when they're preparing food for somebody who has celiac or gluten issues, but even dairy issues. I had my first anaphylactic shock when I was one month old because um, I became orphaned at one month and I eventually went to stay at my grandparents and they milked cows. So I got cow's milk and that didn't go well. And, um, ended up uh, in the hospital at a month old with anaphylactic shock. So these kinds of diet limitations, they're not a fad for me. They're something that I've had to really get in and work with and make my head understand what's at play. I have so many friends who want me to be able to try this, try that, do something different, do something that they can do to fit in. And I just can't, you know, uh, it isn't about, um, at my age, I'm not going to sabotage my health. I'm still putting together my legacy work, my videos, making a movie, uh, writing four more books. I've already got three out and, um, there's, and, and I have three art projects on my table as we speak. So it's not like I have time to be sick. I don't and I have to have my energy high I have to be focused and so many people need that energy that I have and would pay anything to get there and it is a blessing that I have it and I hope at some point in the future as people come here to study with me to stay at the bed and breakfast and to learn um, how to manage their own life that maybe they'll want to enroll in the coaching program that I started years back after um, the holistic college was closed. So with that being said, we have uh, Cornish game hen stuffed and sitting in the roaster. So I'm going to move him over just a little bit to the side and in the front, the neck quarters, I am pouring in the rest of that dressing. 
Now, I'm very lucky that I get to do that because I can put a lot of food in this one big pan. And for me, this will last me three or four days just to eat on that. So I won't have to cook for three or four days, which means I can do more art. I can write more. I can video more. I can get other things done and I'm not in the kitchen. But wouldn't it be lovely if my own personal Jacques Pepin would show up in my life someday and keep inspiring me and keep me safe with healthy food and, um, you know, Anyway, I send my friend uh, Henry, he inspires me. He posts um, videos on the deal, the menus and the dishes that he cooks. And my head is always working. I'm always trying to figure out how can I do that for myself? How can I translate that into gluten-free or dairy-free? And to him, I want to say, these scissors are yours, baby. I'm going to make sure my sister or whoever is handling my estate get these to you because this is my number one tool in my kitchen. I've literally had, comes apart, I've literally had panic attacks because I've lost my scissors. Uh, I use it for everything, everything. And in the prep work today, I used them four times and I wash them, but it's a Cutco brand. I've had it over 20 years and... I was going to take them to my grave, but you have inspired me so much that I want you to have them. Anyway, the only thing I'm going to add to this is a little thyme and a little oregano on top of the hen. And as most of you know who follow my book and my past videos, I usually have all of my spices as essential oils because I can regulate the purity there's no none of the cross contamination factors in them and they're organic. Okay, so you really use very, very little. And I don't know if you can see up in the window above my hen here is about 20, 30 of my essential oils that are palatable. They're called Vitality Young Living Essential Oils. And so today I'm gonna to add a couple drops of oregano and thyme to the hen on top, and then I'm gonna put salt and pepper on him. And put the lid on and put him in the oven. Now I just put a couple drops on and then I rub it in. So, if you've um, done any uh, research into um, essential oils, you want to make sure that they are edible and that they are the highest quality you can afford to buy or even more because they, when, I first found out that a lot of spices and condiments are filled with things like cornstarch, wheat. You know, they call it on some labels modified food starch. I can't have that. That's wheat. A lot of spices are only um, wheat that's been flavored as the spice. I can't do that. And I'm not going to do that to myself. You know, so when you learn a better way you do the better way and that's what cooking with the duchess is all about so mwah, i'm going to bid you adieu as i put this in the oven and i wait two hours and i can enjoy and finish my wine so i wish you were here today i wish you could smell the kitchen already and um I hope you have a happy, happy Thanksgiving and a beautiful holiday. Take this dish with you. My next video up is going to be pumpkin pie, gluten-free, dairy-free. It's not that easy, but it's simple, simple. You just have to think ahead. Anyway, love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.